first the standing since we're at, I think June second now. In the National League East, the Braves four and a half game lead over the Phillies and the Mets. Trending teams trending the wrong way. Phillies losers of five in a row. Mets and Braves winners of at least four in a row. So the Mets have played themselves back into this race. We in the Central lead the division by 11 and a half. We're on a 10 game win streak, which is a huge help. Uh, Cubs playing really well too. They've won eight of 10. It sucks for them because they played really good baseball, but have made no ground over the last 10 games. Actually lost ground. And then you have the Brewers fighting injuries and the Pirates and Reds in four and five. The West, the D-backs continue to stay in this race. All three teams playing well. You can see in their last 10. Padres half game back with the holy trinity of Machado, Soto, and Tatis Jr. playing well. Dodgers, they don't go away. Winners of four in a row. They're only two games back. Giants were above 500. They're starting to fade. And the Rockies, and the bringing up the rear. First time we look at the wild card standings. We got the Padres with wild card spot number one. So three wild card spots. They have number one. The Dodgers have number two. Cubs and Phillies are tied for three. So in games back. One thing I wish they changed is it had plus. So you could differentiate. Like I know three of these teams are wild card spot holders. But because they have leeway, I wish they would have a plus. Minor complaint. Cubs and Phillies are tied for the third spot. And that's a game back. Giants four and a half back so the the Giants are fading in the race for the division they're still hanging around the wild card and then you got just I don't really consider anything more than five games a big deal right or make, I'm only considering within five games a big deal okay in the American League the Yankees lead the division the winners are nine to ten Blue Jays, and the only loss they had was that complete dump destruction by the Padres. They lost like 21 to 2. Other than that, I believe the Yankees have won 12 of their last 13 games, so they're playing really well. Blue Jays, game and a half back. Rays, six back. And then Red Sox and Orioles bringing up the rear. Central, White Sox, plus six. Someone trying to do something in this division. Guardians plus two, two back. Twins above 500, two and a half back. Tigers, they got to 500, not a struggle in the Royals. Well, I feel partially responsible because I'm helping their losing streak continue. The West, the Angels without Otani. Just a half game lead. People are starting to catch up. See, they're not playing well. Four of four and six in their last 10, I believe. I can't remember how much that is without Otani. All of it is without Otani, but I don't remember how much was before. So the Rangers catching up, Astros catching up, Mariners, oof, loser of seven. Bo wouldn't be happy to see that. The A's loser of six in a row. I mean, we can't be surprised. And then this wild card, Blue Jays hold the top spot. Rangers a game behind the Blue Jays. Astros would have the final spot. Rays a game back, Guardians a game back, Twins a game and a half, Tigers three and a half, and then the Red Sox lurking at five. Like for me, the cutoff is five because you still need a lot to go right in a week to make up a five game gap. Of course, this can change over the course of the season, but as we get closer, five is usually my cutoff. We've got a couple other things here. Awards, Players of the Month. I didn't look at this last month. But for this month, you got Cole, sub one ERA for the month of May. A Rosarena, 377, driving in 26 this month. Josh June, 315, four home runs, 10 runs batted in. Not bad. The National League, well, hmm. We know Tatis is not, the, uh, not a rookie. But that's because of the roster, like having to replace him with another player. So it is what it is. But clearly, we know he's player of the month. 383, almost batting 400 for the month. 
10 home runs, 29 runs batted in. Hmm. I wish you could look at his stats for the month. So he has a win, pitched in 14 games, but you don't know how many innings. So I don't know how I don't know how many save attempts either, but not bad. His stats on the season, but you lose a little bit of context here. It's easier with a starter because you can see how many, you know how many starts they had. Speaking of, looking at April, yeah, Tatis will win <clears throat> Rookie of the Year. Montgomery, 5-0 in his six starts, sub-2 ERA, 35 Ks. Luis Garcia, who was a guy that was batting, like, had was the top five in runs, uh, batting average. Other side, Ty, he was a strikeout leader at that point. Hmm. I mean, we all know who that is, so we don't have to say anything about that. And then Valera, 351, he's not hitting like that now. But that's these are the winners in April. Stats, Cardinals, anything that stands out. Well, just talk about hot and cold. With the switch to Legend, who played about a month on Legend now, it's definitely been harder. I'm not changing it back, but there have been some concerns. And the concern was like my entire team being cold. After about a month of play, it seems to have leveled out some. Contreras, who's been cold all season. Herrera, so, I mean, the same thing. O'Neal, Edmund, and Goldie, all cold. Goldie has not been hitting well. He got off to a really hot start. Had a three-home run game early on against the Braves, I think. And then he just, he was an extra base hit machine. Now he is starting to cool off quite considerably 248 average just 300 obp runners in scoring position where's that at they're not here it is not here where is that at why would they take that out interesting because that used to be there I know it's in the game because it's under the hood when they do stuff. Oh, just regular player card. You're right. You're right. Just want to see what it looked like. Yeah. This is a concern here. This is supposed to be higher than your batting average because this should be what is easier to get a hit. 191 is not good. Dylan Carlson, to be fair, he bats at the bottom of the, the lineup, but still 179. Being sub 200 in this situation is terrible. You'd like to be above 300 because this is when you're supposed to be able to hit well. If you look at Contreras, his average with runners in scoring position higher than his batting average. That's what you want. Myers, the same. Donovan, the same. That's what you want to see because that means you're going to get better. You're going to get better pitches to hit for the most part because guys are on base. They're going to be more aggressive trying to get you out. Anyone else that jumps out? New bar. The only hot bat right now. He started off the season hot, cooled off, even on Hall of Fame. But now he's starting to pick it up. Three home runs against the Reds. Getting close to double-digit home runs. Average is not good, but he is hitting the ball better. And he's having more extra base hits when he does get on base. So, the slugging has gone up. He's on a hot streak. We'll see if it continues. Contreras... Probably the biggest concern I have as a bat right now, batting 200, basically. Um, he has not hit well. He hits well in bunches. I feel like if he hits a home run, the next game he goes hitless. If he hits a home run in a game, he probably is probably the only hit that he has. So just consistency getting on base. He is too good of a player for us 
to have the bat at the bottom of the order, but I can't have him batting fifth or sixth if he's not going to be able to drive in runs when you got guys like Arenado and Carp that can get on base in front of him. Got to have someone behind those guys to knock him in. Pitching wise, no one really to complain about, but Helsley, I would like to talk about him. So he had a blown save in his first outing of the season. And then since then, he's been absolutely dominant. 21 for 21 in save opportunity since. A whip of sub 0.7, an ERA of 1.14. He has been absolutely dominant. He's probably been my best. He is my most reliable arm out the pin. Statistically, I trust Gallegos the most still. But Helsley is that dude. The fastball to blow by people, but then still the breaking balls to be able to keep people off speed. He's been very, very efficient so far this season. Mats, well, you can see his regression a little bit, that hit per nine. I mean, it's kind of hard to get people out when it's 42. No wonder he's so bad, right? 5.34 ERA, we're watching. He's being watched very closely. If he starts to falter, he knows that he will be going to the bullpen. The issue with him is he still owed a lot of money. So I can't really move him. And if I do, I have to move him and I'm probably going to have to eat some of that money or like take on less eat, you know, money in return <laughs> or take on more so I can eat some because I, I just don't see how he's appealing with that contract or his rating. We'll see. On the flip side, though, a nice surprise is Jordan Montgomery. He is not what you would consider the ace of our staff, at least going into the season, but he has played that way. You can see he's 8-2 and two in 12 starts. He has a 1.59 ERA. That's good for top five. Or actually, I believe that is the number one ERA in the National League. His whip, 0.89, because I have the stats in front of me. I believe that he is number one in whip too. Yeah, tie on is second with 0.94. ERA, he's number one. Webb is, or sorry, Cobb is number two with 0.64. He's been very good. Nice strikeout to walk ratio. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep holding up, but him and Miles as a one-two punch is nice, especially with Flaherty and Wayno. Like they're consistent but they have the, have the capacity to have bad games, bad moments during games. These guys tend to be pretty reliable from start to finish. So see if that continues. 